Thank you. I'd like to take care of some housekeeping, as they say. Um, welcome to our site. Uh, for those that are new to us, we ask that you would like, subscribe, and share. And for those who would like to also support us financially, we have some links where you can support us financially and uh, be a part of our family, as you will. If you need to uh, speak to me, just send me an email, and I will gladly return your requests. So thank you again, and I do appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are looking at man's soul. We started this study about the spirit, soul, and body. We know that this is the makeup of man because the Bible tells us that. And we talked about the condition of the soul, I mean of the spirit, and we are continuing looking at the condition of the soul of man after he fell from grace, if you will. Um, he broke his relationship with God, his disobedience to the Word of God. And we've been talking about this entire universe and existence is um, dominated by two things. One, it is by obedience to God's Word and disobedience to God's Word. We know that the entire universe, the scripture teaches, is held up by God's word. We know that uh, he said you have to believe that God has created the, the universe and that he is God in order to come to him. And that is about faith. And so we are looking, we started looking at the condition of the soul yesterday. And uh, we noticed a couple of things that um, is in the word of God. Uh, we saw that Ecclesiastics, uh, I apologize, Ezekiel 18.4, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sin will die. And that is God declaring to us what happens to us as individuals, that when we die, uh, when we commit sin, that that soul shall die. And we know that happened to Adam. With, through disobedience of God's word and the soul, spirit, everything died. The earth, everything that was connected to the man died at a cellular level. We read also in Jeremiah 17 and 9 through 10, the heart is, deceitfully, um, uh, is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. The heart, as we are, we are talking in our study, is the soul of man. This is the heart of man. When God uh, kissed him, it tells us that man became a speaking soul. So that the soul is the heart of the man, if you will. And the Bible tells us that after the disobedience of Adam, that this uh, soul of man was very wicked or deceitful. And it was, and it says it's beyond cure. But God has provided a cure for that. We uh, briefly touched it before we left. It says, who can understand this corrupt, uh, deceitful heart? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. And we are going to, I promise you, we're going to go deeper into the different um, compartments, if you will, that one can say is the soul, and that is the mind, uh, the will, and our emotions are in that. But what I wanted to do with these few podcasts is to set a foundation by which we are going to go and see what the condition of all of those aspects of that man when he, um, when he fell, that the mind of the man was affected, his will was affected, and his emotions were affected as well. And so, we are looking at all aspects of who we are in, uh, as human beings on this earth. And I honestly believe that when you, as you get a better understanding of you, spirit, soul, and body, when you read the scripture, it becomes alive in, in so many different ways because you can finally get a chance to see where and what God is speaking to you in your spirit, soul, and body. And then you will learn how to appropriate his word, his promises in your life 
as well as your relationship with God, because it tells us that Mary said her soul was singing and praising God. So you will know what part of you is engaging with God at any moment from this knowledge. And it's very, very useful to understand who you are. So we see then that this God uh, that uh, has created man, that kissed man and gave man um, a heart, uh, became a speaking soul. It says he searches the heart and examines the mind to reward each person according to their conduct. And we talk about karma. Karma is a principle that is established by the Almighty God in every religion has it. And it is a human behavior. It is the way by which God judges someone. He judges you. He said, to the forward, I will be forward. To the uh, pure in heart, I will be. And so he will be what you are to others. So it's very important that you watch your behavior because he tells you that you should love your enemy. That's our God. I don't know about this other God that these people are spitting hatred against all these different sub uh, um, sub uh, families in in the world, you know, uh, as far as the uh, gays and lesbians, the black, the all of these because of color, uh, one is uh, judging others and their conduct, your heart, your heart is who you are, and your heart is the scripture said out of the abundance of a man's heart. He speaks. So your heart is who you are. So if your conduct is evil, your heart is evil. And so you uh, gain understanding as to you, you will see your behavior and where it comes from. And you saw what comes out of your heart. And Genesis 6, 5 says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart or of his soul, were only evil continually. And so we see then that, and we mentioned yesterday briefly, that this was in the time of the Nephilim, and the Nephilim were there corrupting man, and um, man uh, and the relationship between them. And that's what God saw this corruptness, because if you read the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, and the book of uh, Jasher, Jasher, you will see the behavior of the Nephilim at that time and what they were doing. They were vampirism. They were um, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff going on in there. They loved human blood, so they would drink human blood, kill them, drink their blood. They were all kinds of uh, sexual stuff. They were um, uh, mixing, uh, crossbreeding animals and, and all kinds of stuff at that time. Because you have to remember, the scripture tells us, that these guys in the book of Enoch talks that they were disembodied uh, after they got killed because um, the first set of Nephilims, and I've done a study on this, the first set of Nephilims were, uh, the Greek referred to them as the Titans, the clash of the Titans. That is a real story. It was was um, uh, civil war amongst the first set of um, Nephilims, they were really giants. They were tall as buildings, way be, much taller than um, what we talk about is when we see David and Goliath and stuff like that. These guys were monsters. And so God looks on this and he says, ah, no way. Um, and he says it grieved his heart that he created man. And he wiped them out to start all over again because of the wickedness that was great and the intent of their thoughts. They couldn't think of anything good at all. And God said, nah, you have to do something about that. Why? Because it says, out of uh, your thoughts, in Matthew fifteen nineteen, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts. So then we see then that the, according to Genesis 6, 5, that evil thoughts, it says, and every intent of their thoughts of his heart was evil continually. So what was coming out of his heart? Uh, these evil thoughts were murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. And it goes into much, much more. But those are the stuff that comes out. And Jesus tells, told the church, uh, teachers and preachers at the time, he says, you guys are arguing about the, the stupid things about what you eat and what you don't eat. He said, 
you have not um, dealt with the weighty things that you ought to be teaching about. And that's why I saw some preacher a few days ago beating on the house of Barbie's house and stuff like that. That man is a false prophet. He's not a, um, a, a teacher of the Word of God because a teacher of the Word of God is not going to waste his time doing that when you have souls that you need to win preaching and dealing with Barbie, ridiculous people. Anyway, so we know that the question that God begins to ask us, he says, what profit is a man that he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And that's where we were at yesterday after we left. And then it says, oh, Mark also, um, 8.36, the same question, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his, his own soul? And we've been looking at what happens to man when man dies? Job says that when the breath of God leaves, that body is, that spirit of the man goes back to God. We've been looking at that, and the soul of man goes to an area based on his, um, his conduct on this earth, as it said in the, in the scriptures in Jeremiah 17, 9, that um, you will be rewarded according to, to your conduct. Your conduct is your um, actions based on the decisions that you made. So Ezekiel tells us in 1820 that the soul who sins shall truly die. So this man is absolutely corrupt. He, uh, Romans tells us that he is incapable, okay, of, um, of pleasing God because he is corrupt, because out of this soul, can only come uh, um, evil continually. So the man without God, um, that's why religion will not work, because out of that man's soul, the part of this man's soul that is corrupt continually, so whatever work he thinks he is doing to appease God is going nowhere. And so many people spend their entire life serving, um, and God says that, uh, that means nothing to me. You haven't dealt with your your condition. Your condition has to be dealt with through salvation. You must be born again. And so we're looking then at this corrupt spirit. And the book of Psalms is really uh, some powerful stuff. Psalms 56, 13. For you have delivered my soul from death. Indeed, my feet from stumbling, so that I may walk before God in the light of the living. So one soul has to be delivered from death, and God has provided a remedy for you and I. Psalms 86, 13, 4, Your loving kindness towards me is great, and you have delivered my soul from the death of Sheol. And we know that that location is you and I access there by the choices that we make here on this planet. Psalms 116, 8, For you have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so we know here from reading these, these Psalms that David had got a revelation about the, um, the different parts of man because he said, uh, Renew a right spirit within me. What happened, that was after he sinned with Bathsheba and the prophet Nathan came and talked to him and showed him uh, he stand, uh, that is speaking truth to power. That is why I could never believe why the church um, never went to uh, uh, these presidents, all of them, and tell them you cannot do that to any of those folks that are what we call foreigners are illegal aliens because Jesus Christ was an illegal alien too. And so God is very mindful in how you treat others because that shows your character, your heart. For out of the abundance of man's heart, he will speak, he will act because it is you, your heart. And so uh, the psalmist says that uh, you have rescued my soul from death. So the soul of mankind needs to be rescued because he is corrupt continually. 
Psalms 56, 13, For you have delivered my soul from death, indeed my feet from stumbling, so that I may walk before God in the light of the living. And that, guys, is what we have to do as Christian. We have to become born again. And uh, um, this uh, principle is very paramount when you begin to look at yourself, spirit, soul, and body. Now you can truly understand what is being said, because I know a lot of people get all offended when Jesus said, say things to, to them, because I used to get offended by it. Um, when in my backsliding days, I went to an ashram and I saw these people, um, I saw them, man, uh, uh, more, uh, I feel more love came out of them than when I was in the church, and I grew up in the church. I was in the Christian uh, evangelical church. I was one of those that grew up there. Went to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday was all day long, and you'd come home exhausted and all that stuff. And, and uh, um, you know, following the traditions of men and realizing God says, the traditions of men made the word of God to none effect. The heart of all of us were never touched by these people because they never preached the word. They preached all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, the word is designed to go in and separate the soul and the, the spirit from the soul to deal with each individual aspect of man. The word of God through salvation comes into that man, splits it, and deals with his spirit. He becomes born again. He becomes that man's spirit. It tells us that that is uh, your old spirit are gone, your new spirit comes into play. The soul of this man now, the scripture says that we have to save this thing because this thing is highly corrupt. And the only way that we can do that, the scripture says, is that I have hid your word within me, in my soul, that I may not sin against you. So then it is our responsibility, and we're going to start tomorrow going into the different aspects of um, the individual, you and I. We are going to look at the mind. We're going to look at the soul. We're going to look at, I mean, at the will. We're going to look at uh, the emotions of mankind. So this thing, I, again, I just wanted to lay this foundation and show you from the Word of God, because God has provided an answer, as I said to you earlier, that it says in Job 33, verse 28, For he has redeemed my soul from going to the pit and my life from seeing light. So we talked about this. And so I want to take you now to uh, Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. And we're going to read this and let the scripture um, open itself to you so you can see that you have a decision to make as to whether you are going to be a child of God, you're going to be a part of obedience, or you are going to be a part of disobedience. It is your choice, but your choice will dictate where you go. The psalmist says, you saved me from Sheol. You saved me. You saved my soul from going down to the pit, from going down to hell. You saved. And so he begins to um, tell what God has saved his soul because we told you that the spirit of man goes back to God and the soul of man, the heart of that man, goes um, either uh, to Sheol or it will go somewhere else. So it's based on you and your decision. So let's take a look at a story that really highlights this. Because remember when Jesus was dying and he turns to this guy on the cross who's a thief and everything, he says, you know, um, the other uh, thief was ridiculing Jesus. And the other one goes, said to him, look, man, we, I can understand that we were up here, but this guy, he did nothing. And as he's making this confession, Jesus looks to him and says, you know what? Today, your soul, you will be with me in paradise. And we know that Jesus says, into your hands I commit my spirit. So we know that the spirit went to the Father and the soul went down into Abraham's bosom, preached, and then he went over 
into hell and stripped the devil from with all of his authority and whatever he had and walked out on the third day. So after he walked out, he went up to the father, presented the blood, did all his stuff, showed the father, I did it. And the father, uh, he came back down to his disciples and he began to uh, 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 show them things about what is to come and all of these different things. So let's take a look at this uh, situation with the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 19, verse 31. Now you're, you're understanding then that the spirit and the soul and all those things, you have that understanding. So let's read this thing. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and live in luxury every day. We know those, right? And everyone is aspiring to get there. And we know that um, modern day religion uh, teaches that, you know, that's the life that one has to live in order to be close to God. You got to accumulate all this wealth. And we know that these prosperity guys are preaching the wealth. And I get that. But I've done a teaching on this, that there's a better gospel contentment. And so they make you feel that if you don't have the wealth, that you are out of the will of God. But then again, if you read um, uh, books like uh, uh, Hebrews, when it gives you a, an account of what the men and women were doing uh, 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 while they were here on this planet, roaming the, the wilderness, living in tents, being sawn in half, were those guys in the will of God or not? And so this thing, the church has to deal with this. These men need to repent and begin to preach the word of God because the Bible tells us where your heart is, there is your treasure. So these guys are building up a lot of wealth here on the earth because they belong here. I do not belong here. It tells me that I, I am in the world, but not of the world. Jesus said to me, store up your treasures in heaven. And so these men may need to rethink their gospel. So let's go and continue. It says, at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores. So here's this rich man, and at his gate by his place, Lazarus, of course, you know, asking for alms and whatever he has. And he's covered with sores and long, longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sore. That's a horrible um, place to be that sounds like a homeless person that is seeking help from the rich. And we know we see this today. This is a common story. And the rich is just compiling stuff because their heart is here. You will stir up treasures where your heart is and though their soul wants that. And that's what they're doing. So we see in verse 22, a time came when a beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, Hades, in Hades where he was in torment. He looked up and he saw Abraham far away. So we know that the soul of man has understanding when he's on the other side. He is still aware of things and actually he gained knowledge because he had never seen Abraham in his life. Abraham was uh, thousands of years before, hundreds of years before. So this man had knowledge that Abraham, he saw him, recognized him, and he uh, was able to communicate with him because he was still speaking. He became a speaking soul. So he looked and he saw Abraham far off with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the finger uh, in the water and cool my tongue. So we know that that's place where he is. You guys think you have a problem with heat. Um, your soul will have some problem with heat uh, based on your decisions that you make here on, on earth and you think you're uncomfortable now. Whoa. Anyway, this heat was made for the angel. It wasn't made for your soul, but because you have sided with them, you're going to go with them. And so because so you will um, endure their punishment uh, for your disobedience. So we see then that uh, he's begging for water. So we know that there's water there, and that is even torturous, that there's water there that you can see it and you can't touch it, uh, but you're on fire, you're burning up. And it tells us that um, that's hell, bro. Uh, it says that dip your finger into the water and cool my tongue because I am in agony of in the fire. So we know that the tongue, okay, is still there. Uh, this 
uh, um, living soul is there, so that means his body is there. And Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Watch your decisions, guy. And besides all this between us and you is a great chasm has been set in place so that those who were want to go uh, from here to there cannot. We can't cross this um this uh, uh, chasm that is here, and so you're on your own. Can anyone cross over for us? No, no one can. He says, he answered, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family. Raise the dead, send him up. I have five brothers, uh, you know, have him go and preach. Let him warn them that they would also not come to this place. How will you not come to this place of torment? just like everyone else did by faith in God and Jesus Christ. You can negate that by your decision that you make here. Abraham replied, then they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes, then he will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone is raised from the dead. And we know this is true because they are not even convinced because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. So Abraham is true. So guys, um, guys got some decisions to make. It's pretty simple. So I just want to challenge you guys to get into the Word and don't let none of these preachers with their crazy behaviors uh, get into the Word and learn who you are in Christ Jesus so that you can uh, uh, save yourself and save your family because it says that salvation is for you and your household. Trust God. And uh, as we begin this journey, I told you we're going to stay on this so that we can get all things and understand all things for who we are so that we can honestly grow in God and be effective, man, because this is showtime. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight.